Hi, Sarah. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for sitting down with us for a couple minutes. Um, so, you you have like when we think of Sarah, we think California, but that's not true. I just learned. So <laughs> so where did where did you grow up? Um, actually, I grew up in Idaho in a small town outside of Boise, and uh, called Caldwell, with uh, two older brothers and both my parents, and I lived there for 17 years before I went off to college. Okay, where did you go to college? I went to George Washington University in D.C. Oh, wow. Okay. I played volleyball there um, for four years on scholarship. Wow. And I kind of set the stage for a lot of things in my life. Right. So, so I mean, obviously you're a professional athlete now, yeah. and, you know, you, you said you played volleyball. We've got some, we've got some volleyball picks here. So, so how, did you, how did you get into that? Like, how, how did you go from, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say farm girl, but I guess when I think small town Iowa or Idaho, Idaho yeah. I, think, I think farm girl, but maybe not. But how did you go from small town in Idaho out to, I mean, to be good enough at volleyball to get a scholarship at a major university across the country? Um, well, it was, uh, I always played sports all throughout my life, you know, from optimist soccer to t-ball, softball, all of them, and um, volleyball kind of resonated with me, and I started playing club volleyball, which is kind of like Junior Olympic style, mm -hmm. um, outside of just regular school ball, and that's where you get recruited to play, and I got recruited in my, in my senior year pretty late um, to play over there, um, and man, it was amazing um, to play in the middle, the heart of our capital right. and uh, go to school at a really great university. Sure. So, were you were you setter, hitter? Uh, I was an outside hitter outside and a hitter. right side, so I did have setting duties. Okay. Okay. So, um, what was it like growing up uh, with with the brothers? Like, were they were they on you? Were they punching uh, you in the shoulder? How, what yeah, was it like? We had our little, you know, we had our little tiffs. Yeah. Uh, you know, they were mostly just provided kind of like, you know, friends to play with and, you know, we always played sports, basketball, you know, Cowboys and Indians, um, tag, you know, snowball fights, building snow, you know, building snow, sure, sure. Uh, snow stuff in the wintertime, um, sledding, all sorts of, you know, just, uh, we were very active. Okay, so this picture that you sent of your brother's nice family photo there, but I've got to ask you about this hairdo. So we've got like wavy 80s hair with what it looks like four or five Braids yeah, or cornrows little, or little braids. Like, yeah, had you just come back from Jamaica or something? Uh, what no, was going on there? I didn't come back from Jamaica. I don't know. I think uh, I, had, I always, you know, I had a, I was kind of a girly girl. I always had my nails painted and, you know, I got a perm to my hair. Oh, that wow. Was, that was kind of the style back in the day. <laughs> uh, I guess that was probably late 80s, early 90s. And yeah, I got a perm. We used to do that. And uh, yeah, I always had really interesting hairstyles, though. For a while, I had this like ponytail on top of my head. Like uh, like Pebbles Flintstone sort of Man, thing. Man, pretty close. Yeah, it was it was just part of the hair, um, you know. And then and then we also had the back in the '80s. You had that feathered look oh, on sure. the sides of yeah. the ears. You okay. know, that was kind of. I always liked that because it would it would seem to dampen the effects of my ears that I always felt like stuck out a little more than normal. So, do you think you can talk to Paragon and get him to make a hat that has a hole in the top so you can get the ponytail coming uh, we out? Can bring like it back. We 2018. Can get the Pebbles look. Yeah. Maybe you know. I mean. Okay, so when you're when you know when you're traveling the road, you know you said that you're you're out all the time. Like, what what are you yeah. looking to do? So once the once the tournament's done and you've got another tournament a couple couple weeks away or whatever, are you are you heading out to the woods? Are you trying to find a, like a spa somewhere? Like, oh, how do sure. you relax? Uh, um, I definitely uh, I definitely like my time to relax. Uh, hiking and you know visiting you know beautiful places is certainly high on my list. But I do really compete uh, nearly every weekend. Yeah. If I'm not competing, I'm probably trying to run an event or do something um, to you know. Yeah, I have to monetize my time. I can't just be out here for free. I sure. literally do rely on prize money um, to get me up the road. Sure. So um, I can't really take weeks off at this point. Um, so mostly my schedule's full. I'm, I'm headed up the next uh, the next day, or maybe in two days or so. I'm headed to the next destination and practicing the courses and uh, you know doing all the other stuff in between. Awesome. For player branding, social media stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for, for spending some of your time. Uh, I, I don't think I can monetize this time, but thanks for uh, thanks for sitting with us for a couple minutes. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me.